God's coming back for a bride that's in unity. It's time we like link arms and, and love one another. The Bible says if you can't do that, you don't know him. You read 1 John, you'll see it. It's all over it. You say you love God, you can't love that one. You're a liar. It's the word of God. Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. But you, do you know what you did to him? Yeah, but you don't know what they put me through. Do you know what we put Jesus through? Let that thing sink in. Come on, be real. Like he went through more than, this is real, man. You all right? <laughs> oh, I love you guys. It's so good. So prayed for that. I told that guy to look. He looks at it. He goes, what do we do? I said, it says lay hands on the sick. You're sick. Let's do it. Simple as that. And you know what's funny? I've come to know that Mary is, is in Catholicism, Mary is to be reverenced. And, and I respect Catholicism. Mary was Jesus' mother. Okay? Here's the deal. The last thing that Mary said at the wedding of Cana, the last thing that was noted in the Bible, was do whatever Jesus tells you. So let's just do whatever Jesus said. Cool? All right, let's get it on. I'm serious. Don't get hung up on stumbling blocks, man. Don't go down like don't make your, just don't pick your battles. Right? So he prayed and he bends over and he goes, you have a power. <laughs> the guy says that because his back's healed. He gets up, a heat shot through his back. It's my first one that got healed. And I'm like, yay, it worked. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm serious. Like a little kid, I still get excited. Why? Because it never gets old because it's absolutely nothing I can do to make that happen. So even if it's a pinky or a headache or a stubbed toe, it's God. Be thankful for everything. Don't think, oh, I need a bigger miracle. Knock it off. It took God, the just as much of God, to heal a headache as it did to kill cancer. We think we need more of God for this one. Right. No, we need our head more out of the way for this one. Come on. Think with me. You all right? <laughs> so he gets healed. Now I'm starting to see people get made whole. My, now I'm coming home and telling testimonies to my wife of what God did. I don't want to hear it. Okay. I'm calling Dan. Dude, I, I prayed for like 11 people today, but one of them got healed. Really? What happened? No, it's exciting. Now I'm seeing like maybe one or two every couple of days, and then I was keeping a log of it. And then I got to the place where I was spending an hour writing down testimonies. Because sometimes I'll be at Walmart and there'll be 10 or 11 people that'll be healed in a shopping trip. I'll be in an airport and it'll be the same. Why not? Man, this is awesome. Do we realize what's available? I had a girl, this lady back here, she went with me to Israel. Wasn't it like that on the trip? praying for people and seeing people wasn't it fun I, it was a blast it was like oh Jews and Muslims and it was awesome why because it doesn't matter what they believe it matters what I believe I don't need a Jew to get on page with me I need to know who I am in Christ so the Christ in me can manifest and touch them with the hope of glory I don't need them to get on page with me I need to be a believing believer a believing believer is one that believes enough for heaven to get into them. An unbelieving believer believes enough for them to get to heaven one day. You can pray a prayer to get to heaven and corner yourself inside the four walls and worship Jesus and pray for him to come back. And when you do that, what you're doing, you're saying, God, get me out of here. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Get me out of here to heaven with me and to hell with everybody else. Why would I do that? Why wouldn't I take on the nature that God said I can have? His divine nature. A partaker of His divine nature in which the promises are fulfilled. It's in 1 Peter. A partaker in His divine nature. Which kicks the carnal nature out, man. 
<clears throat> so now eight months go by eight months go by and my wife started to go shopping with me again but I had to be really careful I had to make sure I shop at one side of the store and she'd shop on the other but at least we're in the same building I'm serious so she's at one side I'm at the other we're in a food store my daughter she's walking with me and we see people healed and we're having a blast we see this lady in a scooter we're coming up we're like hey what's going on why are you in the scooter well, so I ask people oh I got my back and this oh my goodness well can we pray for you no I pray oh, okay you pray well we're part of the body of Christ we want to pray too honey we, listen I've been in this thing for 29 years I've had four back surgeries. I'm on chronic pain medication. I have to travel. I spend over $1,000 a month on pain medicine. I pray, okay? That's her attitude. And me and my daughter are there, and she's with her granddaughter. And I looked at her granddaughter, and I said, do you want to see your grandma play with you again? That's mean, right? Do you think that that granddaughter would ever like her grandma to play? The grandma looked at me like, I can't believe you just did that. I said, come on, let us pray. Your granddaughter can help. We'll all pray. The granddaughter's like, come on, grandma. So we prayed for grandma. She's in the chair. And I said, I need you to get out of the chair to see what it feels like right now. She goes, you don't understand. She said, my granddaughter had to drive this chair out to the vehicle to get me in it to get me into the store I'm in severe pain I said I know but I believe God's touched your back she said I've prayed I said I please looking at the granddaughter trying to help me help me so she gets out of the chair and, and she can she's like this and I said to her I said I said what's it feel like she goes it still hurts I said come on let's pray again we prayed again and grandma goes like this and she rears up not the whole way and I said let's pray again and we hit it we prayed it again I call hit it again we prayed again and she stood up she's standing there and her knees are wobbly and the granddaughter is like this because grandma doesn't stand up straight and then she starts doing this and the granddaughter is like grandma and I got tears in my eyes because I know that God's doing something amazing right now because granddaughter's freaking out I'm serious and destiny is like, because God's getting bigger than we're used to. He shows up like that. You're like, I remember the first time God grew a leg out four inches. I was like, it happened in Walmart. It was the manager. And the greeters ran. Four inches. Me and destiny looked at each other and we went, why? Because God got bigger than we were used to. But once you see that, you're marked. God's hoping to hook you. When you see that, it's a hook. <gasps> I gotta have this. So the granddaughter looks at grandma and she goes, Grandma, run! <laughs> Isn't that cool? Run? I can hardly walk. Come on, grandma. And they took off down the aisle. This is amazing. This is about eight months into this. This is five months in, about four and a half months into me starting to see manifestations of stuff. And the grandma comes back down the aisle and she's a little tired because she ran down the aisle. She has never, like it's been 30 years. She comes down the end of the aisle and my wife walks in the aisle. And I have a choice to make. I can either run. I can tell her. Or I can back away. So I chose the third one. I backed away and said, could you tell her, this is my wife, what happened to your back? Destiny gets behind me. Not because my wife's mean, because she doesn't understand. She's not on page, but I refuse to allow people that don't see to influence the things that I do see. 
if you do that you will limit God in your life and you will honor man instead of God and I'm not saying dishonor man I'm saying you better honor God this will put the fear of God in you Come on, we, God paid a price do you know that one day you'll be judged by your works that's no joke by grace you're saved but you'll be judged by works and you don't have to pray for people you get to I don't want to stand before God and have him look at me and say what have you done I want him to look at me and say well done we should raise our kids with that very thing in mind one day you're going to stand before the father and he's going to say one of two things what have you done or well done Do you know that I'm teaching you this? I'm bringing you to a level. I'm bringing you to a level of accountability. Do you understand that's what preaching does? Preaching is to bring people to a level of accountability to where you make them accountable for the word of God. And we can think of it lightly, but when you read the word of God that says to he who is given, much is expected. If you're given much, much is expected. The more you grow, the more you're expected to walk out because you are responsible to work out the word that you say you know it's really in there take it up with him don't get mad at me it's his bible it's his word so check it out so she says to my wife she said your husband and your daughter came here and I didn't want them to pray for me she said then then they talked to my granddaughter and I was like, oh no. And she said, but I'm glad they did. Because when your husband and your daughter and my granddaughter prayed for me, my back got healed. And she pulled out the back of her shirt to show us the scar on her back. And my wife burst into tears. And what happened was eight months of prayer and interceding for my wife is now coming to fruition not because I debated with her and tried to get her to believe my way but because I walked the walk and allowed the fruit to bear witness of what kind of tree I was so I didn't have to debate her I could walk this thing out and she would know that this is real because God wants us to be dependent upon him to bear witness in and through our lives that we're a son my wife's crying I didn't say a word I just hugged the lady and told her it was so nice to meet you thank you so much for letting us pray for you thank you and we're just crying we went out and paid for our food and stuff and granddaughter drove that thing out of there we get in the car I didn't say a word I did not want to mess this up because you can you can be very right but very wrong you can go into the I told you so and it's ugly I told you so you should have listened see what I'm saying and all of a sudden you don't look like Jesus anymore you look like the one that got kicked out of heaven come on this is a good word I'm sharing with you it's the only one I got right now, so just sharing it. <laughs> Shared a lot of stuff. I'm almost done. So we went home. I didn't say a word. I went back to the bedroom and just cried. Thank God. Got on my knees. Got on my face. Cried out. Thank God. God, you're amazing. I'm so glad that I don't have to like tell her that it's real anymore. I'm so glad that God, glad God that you would do it in front of her so that I wouldn't have to tell her anymore because I'm tired of like coming home and telling testimonies because there had been times when I came home and told a testimony and my wife got mad like this was when we saw the leg grow out four inches it was about a month before that at Walmart we came home we were gone for about an hour and a half we were gone too long and my daughter and I came home my daughter mom guess what happened today at Walmart my wife was upset because we were gone for an hour more than we needed to be because she wanted us to eat dinner I'm learning to adjust and be there time wise it's growing, I'm growing 
but I'd rather mess up on the time thing, doing having people get healed and doing the supernatural stuff and have God hone that in than to not be doing it at all. And she said, I wouldn't have expected anything else when I told her. About a leg growing out four inches. And I'm like, oh, man. I went back in the bedroom, shut the door. God, she won't even honor you. What's going on? This is crazy. God, it's hurting me. Aren't you glad it's becoming normal? Shh. That's what he said. The miracles are becoming normal. It's becoming a lifestyle. It's becoming what is expected. Come on, that's real. So I was like immediately hushed. Big time. And I wasn't speaking that to my wife. I was speaking that to God in my bedroom. Because he's my dad. He wants to hear me. And I, was, I don't like to complain when I'm in my prayer closet. But it was one of those times where I'm like, help! No one's ever been there, right? But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. In verse 41 it says, I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. Watch this and listen very carefully. When you live your life to please everybody around you, instead of honoring God, you're honoring man. And when you honor man and not God, you do not have the love of God in you. When you walk in the fear of man, you are not walking in the love of God. Jesus says it's not even in you. Let me read it again. You are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. That's big stuff. When you seek in your life to receive honor from man, you are walking in what's called the fear of man. And when you walk in the fear of man, you are not walking in the love of God. It's the Bible. We should be able to take that. Jesus preached it. It's a shift in your heart. Look, God, I want to fear you. I want to honor you with everything I am. I'm not saying dishonor man. I'm saying honor men. But don't work to receive honor from them. I'm not saying dishonor people. If I were to dishonor this guy, then I would be doing God injustice. Because I'm supposed to honor everybody, even unbelievers. I'm supposed to honor Muslims. I'm supposed to honor Jews. I'm supposed to honor witches. Why would you do that? Because God created them in His image. We're not supposed to regard anybody according to the flesh anymore. We're supposed to regard everybody because if one died, all died. Jesus paid a price to remove that thing off of them so that we can now see everybody for their created value. Therefore, I don't look at people and judge according to the flesh. I look at people and honor people and love them according to the love of God. Because Jesus paid a price for everybody. I don't run from witches. I hug them. I'm not afraid of people. I love people. I'm not going to get slimed. I'm not. You cannot slime Holy Spirit. You just have too big of a devil and too little of a God. I have come in my Father's name and you not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you'll receive him. How can you even believe when you receive honor from people and do not seek to receive honor that only comes from God? Are you hearing that? If you seek to receive honor from people, you walk in the fear of man. And if you walk in the fear of man, God's, God's saying here, how can you even believe? That's heavy stuff, man. 
That's the Bible. It's strong stuff, but it's real. And I just brought you to a new level of accountability. Not because I'm bad, but because if we don't do this, and I don't, see what I want to do is I want to stir you up in love and good works. I'm telling you about stuff so I can stir you up, but I'm telling you truth and it bears witness because none of you, none of you are thinking in your heart that anything I shared is a lie because it's all true. I don't have, my daddy's not a liar. I don't worship or serve the father of lies and I will never lie to you, ever. Satan has nothing in me. I have nothing to gain. I don't have anything to gain from coming here except to see you guys take this to a level that I haven't even touched yet. Because my ceiling becomes your floor when you can take this thing into your heart. You don't have to plow ground for 500 people to pray, 700 people. You just pray. The word says, if I believe, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pray, lay hands on the sick, and they're going to recover. Period. That's it. Come on. Can we show that video? I want to show you guys a video that I did. Is that all right? I want to sit right here between you guys. Is that all right? Right. I was down on the street with Patricia King, and we were doing a video. If it plays, it'll be cool. If it doesn't, eh. Okay, all right, here's what I want to do. I know that people came here to get prayer because of healing and stuff, because they're sick. I saw people walking with, saw somebody with an elbow brace on. Um, just saw people in here that need prayer. I know there is. Do you know that if, if someone says, you know, does anybody need prayer, you know, because, you know, for healing, and you don't stand up because you believe that by his stripes you're healed, but you're still sick, you're lying. We've been taught that, we've been taught that you believe that by his stripes you're healed and you just believe, brother. It's a faith movement. But if I ask you if you're still in pain and you say no, you're not telling the truth. Are you with me? Okay. I go places and I talk to people and I say, who here needs prayer for healing? And then some people stand up. And then I'll say, I'll put it another way, and I'll say, okay, who believes that you are healed by his stripes, but you're waiting for the full manifestation of that healing? And then everybody else will stand up. Because they don't want to be, I'm not confessing that. I'm not confessing that, brother. We've gotten into this weird place where, where I'm not confessing that. Don't you try to put that on me. But you're sitting there limping out of a, out of a service. And if you're hurting, get prayer, man. My God, go after that thing. Nail that thing. We're the body of Christ. Let's go after it and punch that thing. You know what I'm saying? So if I ask if you're in pain, it'd be a good idea to stand up because then just get prayer. Does that make sense? 
<laughs> okay. Did it work? Didn't work. It's not going to work. All right. We're okay. So, here's what I'm going to do. Who here is a believer? <laughs> all right. You all are in the army of God. So, who here needs prayer for sickness or disease? Stand up, please. If you're in pain, you're in this. All right. They're coming out of the woodwork. Conviction sweeps through the room. Oh, I'm not going to. Okay. It's all right, dude. We're just going after this stuff. We're just going to nail it. That's all. We're just going to pray. Command the stuff to go. It's not like you're... You too? Right. Come on, man. Be the man. Where's that guitar dude at? Is he in here? Dude, I love you. Can you come up and do some pretty playing? I just want to honor you and tell you you're amazing, bro. Do you have any CDs? Do you? Can you hook me up? Come on, man. I don't care. I'll pay for it. I will. It's worth it. I put it on my iPod. It's good stuff, man. Are you on it too? No? You're going to be. Dude, I think you're going to be making another one. I see an acoustic jam set coming out, like, really good. Really. <clears throat> really good. Yeah. They said you were in Nashville or something like that. Were you a, were you a, had a Christian band or whatever? Or? No, I had a, a ministry that I traveled with called Animosity. Uh, five years in Nashville, it was pretty successful. Yeah. And God brought me back. And when I came here, it was like, man, this is a ministry down. I had guys that were traveling with me that didn't want to travel anymore. Just wanted to just off the road and that sort of thing. So. Yeah. Well, dude, it's amazing. I actually see you running a worship school and actually teaching people worship and and. I don't know if you're doing it already, but actually raising up musicians and raising up worship music and, and having people actually sent out from here as a worship center to like just coming here for schools and you running and having schools, getting people into the presence of God because when you worship, you don't worship to impress people. You worship God to make people jealous for your relationship with God. That's good. Thought that was him, didn't you? kidding that's okay don't worry about it I'm just gonna have him strum on the strings what we're gonna do is the body of Christ is we're gonna look at people that are standing they're gonna raise an arm everybody that's standing raise an arm everybody that's sitting surround the people that are standing come on guys help me out please <clears throat> I want everybody around somebody with an arm I need your help please help me if somebody's around you, touching you, going to pray for you, there are people in the back, if someone around him, put your arm down when someone's around you. There's an amazing woman back here that has her arm up. I need someone back there. Don't two-on-one somebody if we need people around the room. Help me out, guys. Just look around. Did you guys get anything out of the night? Did it help? Did it help at all? Did it bring you to accountability? <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Okay, you need prayer too. There's two here that needs prayer, and one's there. One, one. <clears throat> All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. When you pray for the sick, what I like to teach people is that you don't pray for the sick a lengthy prayer or try to preach the whole gospel doctrine to them. What you do is you speak to the mountain. So you find out what it is. If it's a knee, then you say, Knee, I command you be healed. If it's a shoulder, you say, shoulder, in Jesus' name, be healed. If it's a stomach, you say, stomach, I command you, in Jesus' name, be made whole. If it's a back, you can say, Father, I thank you for brand new squishy stuff, in Jesus' name. Just put your hand on their back or their hand. If it's a woman and you're a man praying for her, use wisdom and don't put your hands where they're not supposed to be. Okay? So just ask him what's wrong and command it to leave. And then I want you to check your body very soon after you get prayer. Because a lot of times it leaves and you don't even know it's gone.
Jesus Check your body to see what's going on right now. Start moving your body around. A lot of you are being healed right now. Check your body. I guarantee it. It's around the room right now. Move around. Check your body. Who's being healed right now? Raise your arm up. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Raise your arm up if you're being healed. Raise your arm up. Let me see you. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Come, Holy Ghost. More. More, God. Jesus. Jesus. Wholeness. Shoulders be healed right now. Rotator cuffs, I command you be made whole right now in Jesus' name. Move your arms. Move your shoulders. Shoulders are being healed right now. Move your arm. Whose shoulder was that? Raise your arm up. I felt it. One. Who else? Whose shoulder was just healed? Raise your arm up. Come on, right here. Yay, come on. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Spirit. More. More, God. Somebody's disc in their back just got healed. I need you to bend over. Your back just got healed. I just heard it in my heart. Bend over if your back was hurting you. Right now, it's done. Bend over and check your back right now. Whoever that was, check your back. Whose back's healed right now? Back's healed. Back there. One. Who else's back got healed? Two, three, four. Come on. Someone's right knee right now. You have a right knee injury because of sports when you were younger. The cartilage is worn out. Cartilage is worn out. Move your knee. There's brand new cartilage. Check your knee. What's it feel like right now? Good. There's another right knee that just got healed. Check it. Somebody fell recently within the last two weeks and hurt their hip. Who is that? They fell on the side of their body and they, and they banged their hip. You fell down and you fell down, I believe it was the left side. You just slipped and tripped. Who was that? Someone's pointing to who? can't see. Somebody slipped and tripped. Her hearing just came alive? Yay! Come on! If you've got a problem with your ears, put your hand on your ear right now. God will do it once. He'll do it again right now. Jesus! Ears be open right now in Jesus' name. Right now. Open. 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 Check your ear. All oh, this thing is so contagious. It's awesome. Who else's ear just open? Who else's ear just open? One ear. We have, I know we have another one. Who else is here just open? Check your ear. Somebody has carpal tunnel in their left wrist. There's carpal tunnel in your left wrist. Right there? 
Carpal Tunnel, we curse you and command you go right now. In Jesus' name. Go! In Jesus' name. Right now. I see you in front of a computer. In Jesus' name, right now. The computer, it came from a computer. Right now, go! It came from a devil, but it's you're in front of a computer. Right now, wiggle your wrist. Move your fingers. What's going on? What are you feeling? Hit it again. Jesus' name. Carpal tunnel, we curse you and command you. No word from God comes out with own its, without its own ability to fulfill itself. If God said carpal tunnel, left wrist from using a computer, then it fulfills its own mission. In Jesus' name, wrist be healed right now. Numbness, get out. Get out. Jesus. What's going on? Is it getting better right now? Hit it again. Jesus. Looser. Right now. Carpal tunnel, we command you. Go. In Jesus' name. We cancel your assignment. Let her go right now. Start really moving it around. It should be really moving right now. What's going on, girl? It's better. Just keep praying for that wrist because it's going. That thing can't stay. You don't have to lift your wrist up. Just keep it down and pray. Command that thing to go. It's leaving. Jesus, thank you. Okay, there are six people here to get migraine headaches. Who are you? One. Two. Three. I needed three more. Four. Five. No, that's four, five, six. Okay, stand up. Put your hands on your head. <clears throat> ah, this is the fun stuff. Jesus, migraine headaches, we cancel you and we command you, let them go right now. Let them go right now. In Jesus' name, every migraine headache, we cancel you and command you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Get out right now. Get out. Get out. Do you have a headache right now? Does she have a headache right now? Does anybody have a headache right now? You do. You do. Right now. Put your hand right here. It's in the front, right? Jesus' name, headache, I curse you and command you get out right now. Get out. Move your hand. Check your head. Gone. Good. Yours gone. Yes, gone. Good. Yay. Dude, this gospel is amazing. I'm not doing this to show off. I'm doing this because he's just sharing words of knowledge. That's all. All right? This thing is available to all of you, every one of you. What I want you to do is you keep praying for the sick, but I want everybody to put their hand on their heart. I know that, see, I believe in impartation, but I believe through impartation through the message okay because honestly that's that's how I've gained impart I've had this is just crazy I've had people lay hands on me but I just started to pray for you for the impartation of the message to be in your heart to be man manifest in your life what's up dude bless you man I love you give me some of this all right say father we thank you that everything that was shared tonight may be my life every day thank you for the word of God that's gone in that's transformed me that's made me what the word says do it through me God 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 Let's worship Jesus. Let's worship Him. Worship Jesus. You are alive. You're alive and well. You're alive and well. You're alive and well. You're alive. 
Jesus, 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 we worship, we worship, we worship you, Jesus, we worship you. Worship Jesus with all you are. Come on. Who blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Who blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Who
Shown with angels and sing He is holy 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 He is awesome He is awesome He is awesome
He loves to be worshipped. He loves to be worshipped with the drums. He loves to be worshipped with the guitar. He loves to be worshipped in the dance. He loves to be worshipped all the time. Don't ever discount worship because you want to get prayer. Be very careful. Be very careful because some people are like, I just want prayer. Just worship Jesus. You know, I know a ministry down in Mexico. His name's David Hogan. He's a missionary in Mexico. They have over 600 people raised from the dead. That's nuts. You know, he said that a lot of times the worship band will come and play. They'll just start to worship Jesus and people start getting healed all over the place in worship. Do you know what Bill Johnson's church out in Reading? A lot of people get healed just in worship. They'll be worshiping Jesus, just praising Him. Just praising Him. People with bipolar, the voices just stop right in worship. They just stop. Like the voices just have to shut up because worship set in. Do you know that it's possible for your whole life to be nothing but worship? Every day, all day long. And everything you do, do it as under the Lord. Let's just worship Him for just a couple more minutes, okay? It's worth it, guys. It's worth it. It's worth it. Your kingdom come, your will be done forever. Your kingdom come, your will be done forever. Your kingdom come, your will be done forever. Your kingdom come, your will be done in my life, in my family, in my life. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Forever. Come on, do four more minutes. Four more minutes. Give God everything. Four more minutes. Come on. Worship Jesus. You, 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 you are God. You, 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 you are God. You, 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 you are God. You, you, you. It's all for you, Jesus. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. Our lives are all for you. All for you. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Jesus! Love you, God. Make our lives be a drink offering, God. Make our lives be a drink offering, God. Holy and pleasing, pleasing to you, God. Make everything about our life be pleasing to you, God. And everything we say and everything we do, God possess us. Possess us, God, with your goodness. Possess us with your righteousness, God. Possess us with your heart. God, we're asking you to give us your eyes to see, to give us your heart, to give us your ears to hear, God. We want to be just like you. God, we just love you and we thank you. 
Thank you, God. God, I'm asking you to mark everybody here. Mark them, marked by heaven forever and ever and ever. May everybody that's here never be the same, God. May everybody that's watching on DVD or hearing this on CD be never the same. God, take our lives. Use them for your glory. God, we want to build your kingdom, not ours. Father, we thank you. We give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name. Yay, God. Yay. Wow, that was intense, man. I really love that. I love it when you don't plan it and it just happens. Amen. Jesus, who here got healed tonight? Raise your hands up. Come on, that's so good. Yay, Jesus. Yay, God. This man, you had MS? MS? Here. I've had MS for about 20, 25 years, and there's um, a cousin to my to my mom, um, and they're in, in, the, um, in the thing here, in the group here tonight. And um, I got together with them. They invited me to this thing. And at first, I kind of said, "Well, I don't, I don't think I, I, I kind of want to do it. I'm kind of tired." And uh, and Irma, who's my wife's cousin, uh, said, "You need to come." And stuff like that. So I did come. And um, I don't have that. I, you know, you guys don't know if you don't have MS. It's it's a it's a weird kind of thing. And I'm taking all kinds of drugs and all kinds of things. But this is amazing. So you're so you're telling me that when you came in here, you had MS. A couple couple days ago, I couldn't even walk because of the DMS. Yeah! Woo! And, I, and I thank you. I thank you for very much for being the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. He had seizures, strokes, paralyzed, and MS. Ten days ago, he was prayed for. Okay. Okay. Hey, do me a favor. Run across there, will you? Yay, Yay Jesus! that nothing is impossible for you nothing is impossible for you somebody that watch is this going to be a dvd somebody that's watching this dvd right now just got healed of ms i'm telling you i can see it happening i can see it happening somebody that's getting a hold of this cd is getting the faith to pray for ms to have it crushed god we thank you for what you're doing you're so good does anybody have a relative that has MS? Relative that has MS, go up and see that man. Anybody that has a relative that has MS, go up and see that man right now. Have him pray for your relative right now. Have him pray right now. If you have a relative that has MS, have him pray for your relative. Just show him how to pray. In Jesus' name, God, the same way you did in me, do it in them. is crazy good crazy good who here out there is still hurting right now still hurting in your body come here girl it's Kristen right is that Kristen just Kristen come up here not everybody just Kristen
Give me, some, I, I want some, actually, where's Kristen's family? I need you guys to come up here. Mom and dad and brother. Just hang out. You're good. Just hang out here. There's a lady in a blue shirt that was back there that raised her hand because she wasn't healed. Anybody that doesn't have healing in their body right now, raise your hand. I need people to get around them because a lot of people are made whole. This girl right here, I need you to someone to pray for her. Just command this stuff to leave, guys. Command it to leave. We're in a good atmosphere, a really good atmosphere right now. I want to remind you that Eddie James will be with us on in a week and a half on a Wednesday night. It's a special night. Him and his 50 young people are going to be here. There's going to be hip-hop dancing. There's going to be dramas, worship. It'll be radical. Bring everybody. Last time we had people up and above and below, and it was powerful. We want to encourage you. Come out Wednesday, May 26th, Eddie James Ministry. Thank you. We love you. Seven o'clock on Wednesday. Not this week, a week from this Wednesday.
guys. Thanks for watching the video. We came up with a website. It's called Lifestyle Christianity. We have our newsletter that's going to go out. You can sign up for our email list. We also have testimonies on there, event schedule, all that stuff. It'll be amazing. We want to empower our generation to walk Christianity as a lifestyle so we can all walk with the power of God on a constant basis. It's going to be awesome. So come on over. Bless you. Thanks for watching.